Savage was able to get Maul on board the transport and take him back to Dathomir. We see that his fractured mind is torturing him with the memories of his past, bombarding him with the phrase he learned as a child during his training on Malachor. Far above, far above what once was greatest rendered small. Mother Talzin leads them to the temple, which in the time that Savage was gone had been attacked by the CIS. She performs a ritual similar to that done to transform Savage. Her magics clear his tortured mind, pulling out these poisonous thoughts, while scrap parts from destroyed B2 super battle droids would be reforged into his legs, all bound into place through these dark side arts. When he rises, we see Talzin disappear, as her body had been killed during that CIS attack. But Maul is truly alive for the first time since the Battle of Naboo, and though he laments the years lost, he is intensely focused on revenge. It has been so long and my path has been so dark. Darker than I ever dreamed it could be. Discarded. Forgotten. I have missed so much. The Clone Wars. Oh yes. So it began. Without me. I was apprenticed to the most powerful being in the galaxy once. I was destined to become... so much more. But I was robbed of that destiny by the Jedi. By Obi-Wan Kenobi. The first step would be to get the Jedi's attention by slaughtering innocents. And the message sent to the Jedi Temple instructs Kenobi to come alone. Although Mace Windu believes his capture to be too important at a time where they worry about a secret Sith that is controlling the Senate, but Yoda still sides with Kenobi. Against my better judgment. Agree with Master Kenobi. I do. Luckily for the Jedi, the CIS were offering a 1 million credit bounty on Savage for his betrayal, something that Ventress gladly picked up at a bounty hunter guild. When Kenobi arrives to confront Maul, he acts as if he doesn't remember him. This of course infuriated Maul. I'm not sure I've made your acquaintance. I am surprised you could have forgotten me so easily after I killed your master and you left me for dead on Naboo. And when Savage appears, the fight is brutal, with the Jedi being easily beaten down by the sheer strength of Savage. Taken prisoner, they intend to slowly torture the Jedi, but are interrupted by Ventress who is able to sneak on board their ship. These unlikely allies' first means of attack is simply to troll the furious Zabrax. Like your new legs. They make you look taller. Brother, looks like he's half the man you are, Savage. She leads them away and is able to double back and give one of her sabers to Kenobi. The fight is a blinding whirlwind of crimson blades, but again, the pure strength is simply too much in these tight quarters. Ventress loses a blade, Kenobi regains his, and Maul tries to fill the Jedi with rage to knock him off balance. You master Qui-Gon Jinn, I gutted him while you stood helpless and watched. Ventress and Kenobi know that they cannot win this fight, and they desperately make their way towards an escape craft, barely jettisoning off in time. Savage is eager to pursue them, but if there's one thing these past 12 years have taught Maul, it is patience. We will be patient, Savage. I've waited so many years for my revenge. I can wait a little longer. And the man who was once held back from killing Jedi went on a Jedi killing spree across the galaxy, hunting down pairs of Master and Apprentice. And later when they raid a banking clan transport to gain credits for their operation, Maul decides it is time to behave in a more traditional Sith role, putting the brother that saved him down into his proper place. There is no need for dominance between us. Always two there are, my brother. A master and an apprentice. And now marks the start of Maul's rise to become the galaxy's most notorious crime boss. Using a cargo ship as bait, Weequay pirates are lured on board and offered great riches if they would betray their leader Hondo Onaka. As one of the most established criminals of this era, the Weequay pirate king is not impressed. You are not the first laser sword wielding maniac I've had to deal with. He alerts Kenobi of the betrayal, and Obi-Wan and Adigalia make their way to intercept begun the pirate wars have. The battle takes many lives, with Onaka's loyalists pushed back, and Galia eventually being killed by Savage. The pirate king has a plan, however. In the base's tunnels, he traps the traitors, and with a rousing speech, combined with heavy firepower and the promise of plundering the horned men's ships, they are back on Onaka's side. Kenobi, meanwhile, is forced to fight the two alone. Maul shows some stunning strength in the Force, being able to pick up the Jedi and fling him at will. 
but as the brothers think they have him pinned, a quick move allows Obi-Wan to slide out from under their sabers and up through Savage's arm, severing it at the shoulder, taking his third Zabrak limb. Maul sees the plan has failed, and as they flee from the pirates, his mechanical legs are hit several times, eventually blowing one off at the knee. Savage has to carry his brother, while Maul deflects the incoming bolts. They are both just able to make it into their ship, but a hit by a rocket launcher forces them onto an emergency escape craft. As the ship crashes to the surface, their escape vessel leads them out into interplanetary space. But this was not made as a standalone vessel. Fuel and life support systems quickly ran out, but as long as Maul was filled with rage, he finds a way to survive. 